what up, MBH fam? Thank you for clicking back, coming to see the boys. Look around for a second, bro. Look at this thing, bro. This thing costs your life. Just this one whip costs cost your, your life. Costs your whole entire your life. life, bro. Yo, thank you to Wires Only. All right, we're in his new showroom, Beverly Hills. This spot is literally insane. Every fucking car I've ever dreamed of having is in here. Ernesto's car is in the back. Just peep the top, quick. Peep the top. In the back, too. That's my fave. Because we want you to see it. What are we? What are we talking about, bro? Bro, we talked about his come up, which is super inspiring. <laughs> Um, I mean, once you hear about his grind, he came from the hospitality industry. Then he started chopping some cars, some Rolls Royces, mm. made his way up, made some great connections. So there's a lot of value in this episode. Um, yes. I'm super inspired right now. I can't wait to run this one back because he's got so much going on. But listen, thank you to the family at Bulldog. Yep. We love you. Yep. You're making this happen for us. Yep. Let's get into the episode right now. Let's go. They know that I go flip mode when I bust the rhymes. Man's on a different thing when I told him a hundred times. I did a bunch of crimes and none of them were done for the vine. So you can take that bullshit and stick that where the sun don't shine. The summer's up, it's about to get real cold. Late nights in the studio with the bros. Welcome back to the MBH podcast, Money Buys Happiness. Guys, before we get into it, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, do the duties, comment, hate comments, love comments. We love them all, all right? Run up the algorithm. Look at what's behind us right now. (laughs) That's all I got to say. This isn't a normal podcast. We got a fancy as fuck podcast right now. Yes. We're in Beverly Hills at Wires Only, his new location. What up? What's going on, brother? How you doing, man? Uh, I'm doing great, boys. Finally, we get to connect. Yes. I know, I know. We had some, uh, it was some back and forth, but we made it happen. Yeah, huge fans of the show, guys. Yeah, appreciate that. So appreciate that. This, uh, this is insane. Like, we walked into this and we're just like, damn, this is what, this is what my garage got to look like, you know? <laughs> yeah. 100%. Every so this is, this is part. the second location. Tell Johnny to cut the check. <laughs> <laughs> so, John, you heard that? You heard John, the man. Johnny, the <laughs> you got the happy dad out here. Um, is this your second location? Mm-hmm. Damn. Um, when did you, when did you purchase this location? Um, we just moved into this location. June? Yeah. June. Okay. A couple months. Yeah. yeah. We're still building it out, but we wanted to have you guys come through and see. I appreciate it. We're seeing all right, bro. A little bit of what we got going on. How does it, uh, how does it work? I see it was like, uh, like on the front door, like not just anyone can walk in here. It's appointment only. Like, how does it work? You know, what's crazy. Did you see the, the Cadillac logo by the front door? Can we kill the audio on this? Yeah, 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 yeah. We did yeah, on we the, saw the the, the, yeah, yeah. the logo. So yeah. this was where Elvis bought all of his Cadillacs. Come on, it was a ca- yeah. Cadillac dealership. Yes. yes, yes. Oh shit! This is a Cadillac dealership. So my friend Chadwick used to run the dealership across the street, which used to be McLaren. Okay. okay. So I used to go see him all the time and hustle cars with them, and I saw that sign, and I was like, "Yo, man, this sign is crazy! Like, what's up with that?" And he's like, "That that that used to be Elroy Cadillac." That's where Elvis bought all of his Cadillacs. That's so this was history. like an iconic dealership. Unreal. But there was a furniture store in here. <laughs> okay. So I was like, okay, cool. So I walked in. They had a bunch of fly furniture and stuff. So I become friends with the lady. And I'm like, so what's going on? She's like, oh, I'm moving back to New York. I'm going all online. I'm like, wow. You know, the space is probably 100K a month or something crazy. And she's like, yeah, it's super expensive. I'm on a, I'm on a month-to-month situation, but... You know, I'll give you the, the guy's info. You should call him. <laughs> so I call him. <clears throat> and, you know, we had a bunch of lawyers going back and forth trying to get the the space. And it was just like, it was it was expensive. Yeah. <laughs> to and, say the and, least. and, you know, we weren't able to get a deal done because there were so many people involved. So I finally told the guy, I'm like, man, where's your office at? Yeah. He's like, oh, you know what? I'm, I'm right here in, in uh, Brentwood. Okay. I'm like, man, I got to come see you. So I you know, haul butt over there, go see him, like praying on the way, like, man, I need this space. I know what this space could do. The guy's like, oh man, you know, I don't know. So I got Jamie on FaceTime. I'm uh, with the guy that owns the building. He bought it, you know, I don't know, 20 some years ago. He owns the whole block. He owns the Lexus dealership also. And he's like, man, I don't know. He's like, I don't know what, you know, I don't know about what you do. So I pull up the Instagram. <laughs> IG comes so, hard. So, 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 hard. So, so I pull up the IG. And I'm like, well, I got a show on TV. It's called Million Dollar Wheels. It's on TNT. You know, we sell cars to a lot of people that you may know. So I start calling all my friends that are clients. I'm like, look, man, this is so-and-so and so-and-so. 
by the end of the meeting, the guy was like, here, man, just take the keys. I just, <laughs> I was gonna say, here's the bro. keys. Like, just get out of my office. He's a huge, him and his brother love cars. Okay. Super cool guys. They wanted somebody in here that they could grow with. Mm. And so they gave us a shot. And so we rolled the dice and we got super lucky with the space. That's oh, beautiful. And bro. the owners of the space that we worked out a deal with were very cool. And so here we are. With, with your other space, it's not uh, like, is there frontage like on any main mm. streets? Or is more of like yeah. a... Yeah. The other space is dope. We did the um, full send pod full with send the pod boys there, yeah. there, and it's completely decked out. Yeah, and yeah, car, yeah. You know, it's it's like car mem memorabilia everywhere. Yeah, you yes. know, uh, all the amazing cars just like this. So we have basically this also in the other location, but this is in the heart of Beverly Hills next to Ferrari, Lexus, Lucid. You know, you couldn't ask for a better location. How does that feel? How does that feel to be around these guys? Man, it, it feels good. You know, we used <laughs> to drive by this space all the time. Like, man, what would it be like to be in Beverly That's Hills? True. You know, what would it be like to be next to uh, to Lucid or next to McLaren, you mm -hmm. know, or Ferrari or, you know, some of the biggest brands in the world? And it feels good. It feels good. So we're, you know, we're in the process of finishing out the space, but we're almost there. It looks good, bro. Okay, yeah, I gotta congratulations. Tell you. So we got to take it way back. Because people probably just see you now with this fit on. Yeah, thank you. With, <laughs> with that chain on. Like, geez. Well, we got to talk about the come up yeah. and where you started. <clears throat> what were you doing before cars entered your life? Man, I was uh, like myself and a lot of my team, Joey and Michael, some of the guys that you met, were all in the hotel industry. Okay. okay. We, were, we were all running hotels. That's pretty, that's, that's definitely not cars. <clears throat> Hospitality. Though, Hospitality. Yeah. yeah. Not definitely not cars. But we were doing, I was doing cars. I always had a passion for cars. Okay. I always wanted a nice car. So we, I started doing cars probably when I was like 14, 15. Okay. Was when I first bought my first car to sell. Like customizing it and shit? Just at that time, I was just, I didn't have enough money to do anything but okay. get the actual car. Okay. okay. And pray that nothing went wrong. Okay. <laughs> so there's no wheels or wraps or anything right. at, that, at that point. So I was running a resort in Colorado uh, Joey and Michael were running um, the Montage, which is the Mayborn, which is right down the street on Cannon. Okay. So I started out in hospitality because I knew if we could combine, you know, the hospitality, the customer service with automotive that we could probably make something happen. Okay. And, and so from there, yeah. so from there, you're... You're running a resort mm. in Colorado. How do you even freezing how do you cold, even, bro? Yeah, as I was gonna <laughs> freezing, say, like total I mean, opposite, like freezing cold. <clears throat> I remember, you know, walking through the the snow straight up in like a suit, and then you would have to wear boots to get to your car, and then put your shoes <laughs> That's on. Crazy. That's like and, Toronto, bro. Yeah, like Toronto. Yeah, and you would get in the car to start it, and the car would start, but none of the electronics would work. Okay, <laughs> and you would look, and it would be like negative twenty two or negative yeah. sixteen or negative ten. And I did that for like three, three and a half years, almost four years. Yeah. And the whole time you, you're already loving cars. I was loving cars. And I always had like one or two cars at the resort that I was selling while, oh, <laughs> while I was at. Wait, what do you, what do you mean? Like you just, yeah. like you pulled up in the car and then you're like, you're trying to sell it on site? Like not on site, but like back then you would put them, I like in the paper yeah, or, or auto like traders. eBay or, okay. or whatever. And so while I was at the resort, I always had like one or two cars parked there yeah. that I was, I was hustling while I was at the resort. It's like remember a little any, showroom. Yeah. You remember any of the cars you were selling at that time? Yeah. I mean, anything. I mean, I even sold anything. the street sweeper. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to oh, God. <clears throat> I was driving back from my lunch break and I saw the street sweeper on the side of the road. And I was with my uncle at the time and he's like, man, those things sell for a lot of money. And I was like, oh man, I want a G-Wagon, you know, I'm going to flip a G-Wagon. He's like, man, you can make more money on this. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, the guy wants to sell that. You should go talk to him. <laughs> <clears throat> so I go up to his house, knock on the door. And he's like, yeah, you know what? He's like, I do want to start this thing. I, I do want to sell this thing. It won't start. I just want it out of my driveway. Okay. So I'm like, all right, what do you want? Like 10 grand or something? And he's like, he's like, how about 15? I'm like, okay. So I get the money together, go back. I bring the mechanic <laughs> from the hotel. And oh, he's shit. like on the, on the side. He's like, he's working a, for you too on yeah, the side. He's like, give me a case of beer. I'm going to get it started. So he jumps it. We start it. We bring it back. Put new um, uh, brushes on the bottom, like nice. paint it and like new battery. Everything is working. This thing looks brand new. That's crazy. <clears throat> Put it on eBay. Like this is before I had the other cars. Okay. 
And a guy calls me. He's like, hey, what's up, bro? I'm, I'm from uh, Utah. I think it was maybe on Craigslist or eBay or something. He's okay. like, yeah, I have a street sweeping company. I'm like, okay. Mm. He's like, I was asking like, I don't know, 65 grand or something, something crazy. And he was like, man, how about I give you 62 grand? And I was, <clears throat> and I was like, let me call you right back. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about it for a second. I called him back and I was like, 62, 62, five. And he's like, done. He's like, I'm going to fly in with my son and we're going to drive it back. And you bought wow. this thing for how much you say? It was like nine or 10 grand. Oh my God. I think we we're in it 20 grand when it was all said and done. Jeez. So was that the was that the first like big sale for you? No, nah, it was just one of them okay. while I was at the resort. So I was like, you know, I would come in at seven a.m. and I would leave at midnight. Okay, seven yeah. days a week. Yeah, yeah. Like brutal, brutal, brutal hours. Damn. Suit every day. You know, there was, t I don't know, two hundred guests on property all times. Yeah. Dealing with you know nonstop fires, just making sure everybody was good. Was, the w but I was learning. Mm, I was learning okay. the guest services. Yes, I was learning yes. the hospitality. I went to all the hospitality training you could think of so i didn't really like it at the time but i did like what i was learning mm. so we popped the street sweeper off boom it's gone yeah. <laughs> made a huge rip i don't know it was like cleared 50 g's so That's i'm like, nice, bro. <laughs> so I'm like nice. Yo, what man. were you making at, at the hotel the at that hotel point, was right? making like eight grand a month Jeez. but working yeah. 24 7 yeah, yeah. 365 yeah. like non-stop at the time it was a lot of bread i was yeah, like sure. so happy i you know i loved it um, cause I, there was nowhere to go. Yeah. There's no clubs. There's no restaurants. Yeah, there's no, Colorado. you're just locked in. You're you just go snowboarding in. and that's yeah. it. You want a lift ticket? I mean, that's what you're going to spend <laughs> your money on. Seriously. So you're just working. Just grinding. Yeah. So it was just stacking up the bread. So I saved up, I don't know, 300 grand. From just I, doing that, the eBay way. eBay and my salary okay. and okay. saving money, a flip here, flip there. <laughs> so I see this role. They're having a Rolls Royce auction here. In Cali. Mm. Sounds like my kind of auction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to be there. <laughs> so I tell the owner, I say, hey, I need a day off. Now, mind you, I, I wasn't allowed any days off. Okay. I was working seven days a week. And I didn't even know better. I should have had days off. But they were just like working me, working me, working me. I was at the time, I was living in the hotel Oh shit. In an actual room. Oh, so bro. <laughs> so I was like, they were it. just calling me for everything. Like, yeah. Yeah. This happened. That happened. So and so is here. This person's mad. This oh, so person. You're always working then. If you're um, already living 20, in there. Yeah. Yeah. For the first two years I lived there. Damn. But it was my baby. So I was, you know. Yeah. You didn't mind it. Yeah. I, I, I was like all over it. So I find this Rolls Royce. I asked for the day off. They're like, yeah, cool. As long as you're back by tomorrow. They're like, what are you going to do anyways? I'm talking to all the owners and managers. I'm like, I'm going to go to Cali and buy Rolls Royce. <laughs> and they're like, you're crazy. Get out of here. Are you even coming back? I said, no, I'll be back. So I fly. I drive an hour, fly, you know, coach, commercial, another two hours, another connecting flight, oh, get a rental car, drive to this auction. Mm. Now, at the auctions, you got to pay for these cars as soon as you get them mm. when you're first starting out. Okay. Because you need to have, like, access to the auctions, You got to have right? the access. I, I, I have that set up at okay. this point. Oh, at this point, yeah. Yeah. So I have it set up, but I'm still working at the hotel. So the car, I'm in the auction now. I'm, like, nervous, like, sweating. I'm like, man, here comes the car. Yeah, at the time, it was right when the ghost came out, if you remember oh, that. Yeah. In, in, like, 2010, 2012, something like that. Black, silver hood, white interior. Oh. It was, like, brand new. Like, it's 500 miles or something crazy so i'm like oh man here we go so everybody is bidding on this car and i'm telling everybody there, like yo i'm leaving in this car like <laughs> i don't even care confident but everybody eh? like every dealer in the world is there trying to do the same thing trying to buy the same cars everybody's you, yeah. got a rolex and amex credit line you know there's a it's car dealers so yeah. they're all there you know hustling so boom the car comes up like right at 300 grand it was like 310 with the auction fees so i get it so now I'm like scrambling to go pay for it and figure it out and running to the bank and getting a check. So you like drained, drained everything you had for that? Everything and some. For one car. For, this for one, one car. Damn. And now I have to drive the car back to Colorado. <laughs> put the miles on it. And put the miles on it. Because they're like, hey man, are you gone? Are you done? Are you, when are you going to be back? Yeah. Get in the car and I start driving back. Jeez. And it was like winter time. I think it was like snowing and shit by the time I got to Colorado. I'm just like... Took me like 16 hours or something. I drove straight That's through. Fine, bro. Pull in, change, suit up, stash the car, go right to the meeting like nothing happened. <laughs> There's two meetings, one at 8 and one at 3 p.m. And I got there for the 3 p.m. for the shift change. Yeah. Walk right in. 
I couldn't wait for my dinner break because I wanted to clean the car up so I could take <laughs> pictures of it and get it up as soon as possible. Yeah. Dinner break comes, boom, change. There's no car washes. There's not like you can hit your boy and be like, yo, pull up, you know, detail, detail the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah. It was the one you put the quarters in <laughs> and you get out the brush. And you have like 30 seconds <laughs> you before got that. 30 <laughs> seconds. I got the roll of quarters and I'm trying to figure out the thing and the brush looks brutal and I don't want to use the brush because it looks like scratch it up. a Brillo pad and it's like <laughs> yeah. a brand new Rolls Royce and my life savings, all I have. Yeah. So I'm like wiping this thing down. I get it cleaned up. Like the next morning I take pictures. So I put it online. For like a hundred more than what I paid, I don't know, three ninety nine or something like four hundred. Where are you getting the prices at this point? Like you're looking just, around at yeah, shirts? just online because the car at the time was new, and it was a little bit less than it would be, you know, from the dealer. So boom, my phone rings. He's like, "Yo, what's up, bro? This is a uh, so and so from Beverly Hills Rolls Royce." Okay. He's like, "Yo, I'm the GM." I'm like, "What's up, man? How are you?" He's like, "I had this car sold. I got stuck in traffic. I didn't make it to the auction." Here we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure, buddy. He's like, I need your wire info. I'm like, for what? I didn't even know what the wire was. I didn't even have wire info at the time. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I got that. I need this car. I'm like, it's 400. He's like, okay, done. Damn. Oh, just like that? Just like that first call. You're like, damn, I should have said 450. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's like, I'm, he's like, done. Send me your info. I go to the bank. I'm like, yeah, I need my wire info. They're like, oh, they're like, no, son. Someone's trying to scam you. I said, no, I bought a car, you know, Rolls Royce. Like, this bank is, like, has one branch. They're looking at me like, like <laughs> who is this guy? How the fuck you buy that? What are you talking about, bro? <laughs> Go back to work. <laughs> Go back to work. They give me the info. I send it to them. Like, 10 minutes later, I look at my account. Boom, it's in there. That's amazing. Yo, what did that feel like, though? It felt good. For sure. It felt good. I, You know, I started to ask my mentors. I was like, yo, this is, just, you know, I think I just made my whole salary. <laughs> one one, one, one yeah, rip. One year salary. Right <clears throat> and they're like, man, can you do it again? Mm. that's a challenge for you yeah. can you do it again yeah. yeah and i was like shit i think so <laughs> <clears throat> they're like well if you think you can do it again hire someone else put in a 90-day notice and go give it a shot if that's what you love if you love cars so you had mentors at the moment yeah all these are all hotel guys okay oh, like yeah. this is the main guy from marriott that did the ritz carlton training mike adams still one of my right hand guys to this day okay trains corporate people all over the world he, he came up and trained our staff at the hotel. He trained me because I didn't know anything about hotels and hospitality. So he trained me in the hotel business. Okay. Yeah. And so he's still a friend to this day. So I hit him right away. It's like, man, I just hit a, I just, you know, hit a lick on this car. And he's like, great. Is that your passion? I was like, yes. He was like, well, if you think you can combine guest services and automotive, you know, God willing, this might work out for you. If you can do it again, give it a shot. So I went right into the owner's office. I said, look, <laughs> I'm out. I'm a train. <laughs> Just like that. I'm, 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 out. I'm, out. I'm out. They're like, what do you mean? I said, well, I'm going to train somebody else to take my position. Yeah. So I'll give you 90 days and make sure they're up and running and stuff's running smooth, but I'm going to go do the cars full time. Crazy. He's like, oh, yeah, you'll be back. You're crazy. No mm -hmm. way. Yeah. Classic. It's yeah. classic. Not going to make it. So you risked it. You, you mm -hmm. took a risk. Yeah. I grabbed my suits. I put them in my car. <laughs> train the new guy grab my dogs throw them in the whip and i was out and just the, like that and then that was it and the, the closest nearest place that was warm was scottsdale okay. there you go and you're like fuck it. the cold i'm done with the cold uh, yeah i was like you know because yeah. I, I went there like a couple times with the company and i got there and i was like whoa mastros <laughs> oh, everybody has a rolls royce here yeah. everybody has on a rolex everybody's eating at mastros i was like man this is it now mind you i'm coming from a town in colorado there's only people ski there's like one stoplight it's beautiful country but there's like no one has everyone has you know pickup trucks and stuff raptors like the craziest thing you'll see <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. True. Yeah, yeah which is which is cool but yeah. like I, I was super into cars and this is a huge car town so yeah. did you have any family like at the time or, or i like, had some cousins okay in scottsdale okay. also and oh. then one of my boys that lived in scottsdale too I would sell him cars while I was at the hotel. So he already knew about you. So I knew like a couple people there. So okay. I was like, man, you know what? It's 20 below zero in Colorado. It's 75 and sunny in Scottsdale. Okay. And everybody had a nice whip. It's easy. It was easy. my first time at Mastro's and I was like. <laughs> it's all it took. <laughs> yeah, shout out I Mastro's. I pulled up bro. to the valet and I was like, is this you know, this is a car show going yeah. on here? They're like, sir, please stand to the side. And I, was like, <laughs> I gotta figure this out. You know, it looks like this is a huge car town. And at this point, 
um, obviously like, you know, you're selling cars off eBay, Craigslist, whatever the case may be. Are you focusing on like your personal brand, like the wires only no, brand at that man. point? No, 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 no you weren't even there yet. I had no clue. Interesting. I didn't, there was no Instagram. I mean, yeah. there probably was Instagram, but I wasn't. It wasn't even, what it is today. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. what it is today, or I wasn't even focused on it. Was the dealership in your mind at all, or you were just mm -hmm. thinking, yeah, a little bit, yeah? For sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. At that point, I was like, yeah, I got to open the dealership. Okay. Okay. But I didn't want to be like a dealership. Yeah. I wanted to be like in like an exclusive spot. Yeah. yeah. But it's tough because, yeah, I made the money that I had from that deal, but that's all I had. Fair. So now I'm like, okay, so now I got to get a dealer license in Arizona. I got to find a house, a spot to live. I got to find an office. Yeah, so get my, settled, yeah. Yeah, and get settled. And so my friend that I knew, he, he had a hanger. Okay. And he's like, you know what, man? He's like, you can use my hanger, um, the founder of Levitt's Furniture, and John Levitz, who's still a dear friend of mine to this day, it's like, you can use my hanger, you know, to put a couple cars here till you get going. I'm like, oh, word, what? He's like, yeah. He's like, come over, I'll show it to you. So it's like this, you know, he has some planes in there and stuff. And so he's like, boom, go ahead and hang your license here. So I get the license, I hang it there. He comes in one day and there's cars everywhere. I got cars just you're just buy, you're just buying i was just trying to hustle as many cars as i yeah. could obviously not like this at the time but you know so you were trying to build up what like 20 30 cars mm -hmm. all right get the yeah, inventory could. going he goes man yo bro he goes yo you got to get all these cars out of here <laughs> he goes this is way too much like i thought you're gonna have like one or two cars there's like all this mail coming and all these people and all these cars and all this shit he's like bro you gotta go like i was there like the six months and he was like yeah i you know Time's up. Yeah. Get out of here. Yeah, yeah. Time's up. He's like, this is, this is it. I need my shit back. <laughs> he wasn't expecting. It. He thought you were just gonna be there. Yeah, one. he yeah, was. Yeah. yeah, he thought. Meanwhile, it was, you're here going a whole ass business. I'm going. <laughs> so it took you like six months to get that many cars. Yeah, I got there and I got, I got going. Like, Damn. I, I figured, kind of started to figure it out. I took the money that I had, but I was constantly looking for a spot. Okay. okay. I was like, man, I got to get my own spot. Yeah. So. I'm looking, looking, looking. There's a zillion dealerships in Scottsdale, a bunch of great guys, a bunch of, uh, you know, normal, like, locations pull up, office, cars outside. I was like, I can't do that. Yeah. Mm. I can't. That's just not me. I need That's some, not the vibe. I need a vibe. I need some. That's it, when the vision started. I need something exclusive. Okay. Yeah. So there's an airport there, a private airport. This guy's hangar, John's hangar, was on the other side of the airport, but not, like, where all the action was. But it was still there, so I would always see, like, jets pulling in and out, you know, roses and ranges and all these people just pulling up and dipping out. And I was like, man, this shit is it. This is where you need to be. Yeah, yeah you, you see the PJ pull up, you already know. <laughs> That's the guy who's going to buy the whip. I'm like, this is where you need to be. Forget <laughs> being on Scottsdale Road. Yeah. You need to be at the air park. Mm. So I'll never forget one day I'm on the back side of where the planes come in, and I see this G5 just pull up and like the airport's big but it's not that big so you can kind of be like near the taxiways and runways because all the runways break off to private hangars okay. and all these big corporations and, and individuals own these hangars big g5 door opens all these girls get out like all these cars pull up and like 50 escalades and you know just a big show i'm like damn I'm like whoever this guy is is like i mind you I, i'm not flying g5s or fours or anything at this time yeah. like seeing one in the person coming from colorado at the time was like wow yeah you're tripping Inspired. out yeah. yeah i'm like wow this this guy has some bread this is serious that the hangar that he pulled into was available there was a hangar where he parked his plane in the middle and then two empty hangars on the side okay and so I saw this guy, I used to go to this restaurant down the street, <clears throat> and I saw this guy that was there, Rob, and he has a big red beard, can't miss him, pretty well-connected guy. Okay. And, I, and I, I keep seeing him around town, he gets off the plane. So I'm like, yo, my man. <laughs> he's like, no, 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 bro. Like, he's like, what are you doing here? I'm like, yo, it's he's like, yeah. I'm like, yo, it's me. He's like, no, bro. He's like, he's like, no, he's like, he's like, bro. I said, look, man, I'm going to be the biggest car guy in the, in the world. I need to get these hangers. You know, can we work out a deal? And he's like, nah, bro. He's like, it's not for you. He's like, we, each hanger comes with a fuel farm. Okay. And each fuel farm, people put their airplanes in the hangers and buy the fuel. 
Okay. So not only do we make money on the rent, but we make money on the fuel, fuel on the gas. Okay. And you don't have a plane. At least I know it doesn't look like you have a plane. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I'm in an old beat up, in a beat up whip. And he's like, I don't think you have a plane for any gas. So that's kind of our space. That's what we need it for. Okay. I'm like, fuck, is there any way we could work something out? He's like, no, bro. There's no chance. <laughs> this guy told you straight. Eh? He's like, mm. nah. Not no happening. chance. Okay. You still had the confidence to go up to him, though. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because yeah. I've seen him around. Like, yeah. the guy's popping. Like, he knows everybody. I've seen him a million times. So I'm like, yo, yo, it's me. Though. And he's like, what, bro, from what? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? I said, look, I have all these cars. Can we work something out? So I'm thinking about this space. The two, the, the two spaces on the end, the hangar in the middle, and, like, praying to God. Like, God, man, please, God, help me out. I need this space. I need this space. It's got to be a way we can figure this out. So I run into him again. I'm like, look, man, how about this? How about you and your, your friend that has the plane can take a Ferrari anytime you want? Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Not He's bad like, what do you mean? He's like, me too? I said, yeah, you <laughs> and your friend with the plane, Ron. <clears throat> I said, you guys can take a car whenever you want. On the weekends, you know, you want to go on a date or run around, whatever. But I that's got, the hospitality kicking in yeah, right there. I'm, I'm trying to get creative, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, because yeah, yeah, I don't have the done. plane yet. So I'm trying to figure out how to get in the space. He's like, you know what? That's interesting. He's like, let me get back to you. All right. So I'm like, okay, we got a shot. He hits me back. He's like, what kind of cars are you talking about? <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, um, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, Rolls Royces. Now, mind you, I don't have any of these cars yet. You were just well, saying I'm, it. I'm working on it. Okay. Because okay. I'm envisioning this, but I'm not there yet. That's crazy. I have maybe one or two. Okay. And then like some everyday stuff. He's like, what kind of cars? Are we talking? I said, the sickest cars you've ever seen. <laughs> He's like, all right, I'm going to get back to you. He goes, you got one for me too, right? I said, for you, absolutely. <laughs> he said, oh, if I come in, I can get whatever I want. I said, yes. Calls me back. He's like, man, you know what? I think we'll make a deal. Okay. He's like, we'll make a deal. And it was like some crazy money at the time. He's like, it's going to be, you know, you got to do all, a lot up front. You're going to have to personal guarantee it. You're going to need a co-signer. You're going to need this, that, all this stuff. I'm like, man. So I tell one of my guys, I'm like, listen, I got this space. <laughs> you could put your plane in here. You could put your cars in here. Why, why don't you split it with me? And my, my, my friend at the time was like, yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay. Oh, easy. Oh, it worked out. Done yeah, deal. Yeah. He's like, I got you. He's like, get it. Five year lease. Sign it right away. Give them all your bread. I got you. I'll put my stuff in there. You put your stuff in there. It's going to be fly. Okay. So I'm like, oh, perfect. <laughs> I call him back, sign the deal. Now, mind you, at the time, I had to give him, I don't know, the rest of the money that I had at this point available. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So the first comes around, I call my guy. I'm like, oh, man, great. I think your, your portion is X. You know, I gave my portion. Here's the breakdown. You know, I'm counting on you for this. He said, for what? I said, for the hangar. You know, my, our new office, he's a, he goes, man, F that. He goes, I'm not doing that. I don't, just on. from nowhere. He goes, I'm out. <laughs> what? Oh, fuck. I just like you. that? Like he goes, I am out. He said, you are on your own. I am not doing that. I don't even want anything to do with that. And I said, a few days ago, we talked about it. <laughs> you, <laughs> you just, just, you just said, said, yeah, bro. I said, okay, maybe he's in a bad mood. I'll hit you tomorrow. Yeah. Hit him tomorrow. He's like, nah, man. He's like, I'm not doing that. It's too much. He's like, I'm out. But, you know, he bails completely. Damn. So now I'm like panicking. I'm like, <laughs> All right, guys, we interrupt this podcast to bring you the most important message of your life. All right, you guys know what's going on. NHL is on, NBA is on, NFL is on, every soccer league is firing around here. They got fucking darts, bro. Everything, okay? It's literally a gambler's dream. And thanks to Bodog, we're about to bless you guys, okay? And before we bless you, I want to let you know that we're live on Twitch every week. Streaming with the fans, getting into it, putting some fucking parlays in, ripping some blackjack, some poker, just having a little fun, you know? But in terms of how we're gonna bless you, Ernesto was gonna let you know how we're gonna do that. Well, first, we're gonna tell you what to bet on for darts, okay? Because <laughs> that's what we bet on now, darts. Darts. All right, and Bodog is now giving away a $400 welcome bonus to all our Canadians. All of them. Yeah. All right, it's easy. Go to Bodog, sign up, put some crypto in there. Drop your bets with the boys. All right, let's get back into it. And how you make like how you making money at the time if you're building up the cars? I still have. I'm still okay. hitting. The, I'm calling everybody. Okay, I need okay. a car. I got a. Car. I'm okay. still flipping them. You're still flipping them as you're grabbing. Yeah, them. Okay. as we're going. 
There's cars in there. Yeah. But not like this. Just like 10, 20, you know, okay. every day. And cars. coming and going type of thing. Yeah. Whatever I could flip as quick as I can to keep the lights on. Okay. okay. So now it comes around to the, the, the first and I'm like, I'm going to be tapped out. I don't have enough to cover it. So I call the guys. I'm like, yo, man, I don't think this is going to work. This, Bro, we're going to sue you personally and you're going to kick you out and Jeez. da, da, da. He said, you better figure it out. Not the main guy, but the other guy's like, man, you better get on this. And we need to come pick up those cars you told us about. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I got you. I'll call you back. <laughs> like I'm at office. De I'm at uh, office depot. I grab a desk, throw it together, get a file cabinet, phone line, get the license. I hang it there. I'm like, I'll get a little sign. I'm like, fuck it. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna figure this out. Saw some cars. What went into getting the license at the time? Just to stop you there. Dealer school, right? Yeah. Okay. Getting a bond. Getting dealer insurance. Bunch of paperwork. All right. It's a serious headache. Yeah, it's a bunch of bullshit. It's a it's it's priceless. Yeah. But it's a lot of headache. But a yeah. lot goes into it. Yeah, yeah. But I went to dealer school when I was super young, so I went again and okay. it's not that hard, it's pretty easy, but it takes money and effort and it's of time. Course. Yeah, it's time. A lot of time takes, you know, takes a little bit to get going. For sure. Okay, so you get this get the desk together, you put the sign up. I put it up. I'm like, I'm calling everybody. Yo, you need a do you need a whip? I'm like praying to God, like please give me a customer, or some guy. Like I need a deal. <laughs> I need something to come through <clears throat> asap. The next month is coming. I don't have enough to square these guys away. Damn, I'm tapped out. It's getting close. It's yeah, getting yeah. close. What are you thinking at that moment? I don't know, bro. I'm like, like, did you think, yo, maybe I fucked up? Coming yeah. here, doing this. Maybe I am going back to the resort. I don't know. I said, I got I to gotta figure, it, figure it out. I'm like, I know God's going to make a way. Mm. The same place I used to see the guy that had the, the hangar, that same restaurant, I go back because the guy used to hook me up. He would let me eat the chop shop. He used to let me eat there for free. So he would give me like cards and be like, you just get whatever. Yeah. And everybody went there like it was six spot. <laughs> And so I'm there one day and I'm like, man, I got the new spot, but I don't know if it's going to work because I had someone going in with me. I don't know if they're going to go in with me anymore. And this guy's crazy, crazy, like way out of his mind. He's like, oh man, he's like, you know what? He's like, he's like, I'm going to pull up. Don't worry. I'm going to come see you. We're going to figure this out. Uh, you know, he, <clears throat> here's a free, uh, you know, <laughs> teriyaki bowl. Like, <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it. I'm like, yo, you sure? He's like, yeah, yeah. Don't worry. Don't worry. He's like one of those guys that does like a trillion deals, right? Okay. So I'm like, one day I'm in my office. I'm about to pack it up. I'm like, yo, this might not be it. Like four Suburbans pull up. Oh, shit. The crazy guy jumps out. He's like, oh, man. He's like, I got some. I said, bro, I can't. Not today. Like, I'm, I'm just, I close my door. Yeah. I'm like, go look around. He's like, I'm going to show the people the cars. I want to look around. I'm like, go ahead, bro. He's got like 20 people with him. Okay. But he was always on to some kind of deal. Mm. So I'm like, all right. Always up knew. to something. Yeah, he's like, always okay. on something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You knew it was good. Mm -hmm. So this girl comes into my office and she's like, what's up? I'm, you know, so-and-so from Maxim Magazine. And I'm like, man, like what? I love Maxim Magazine, but like I don't need any magazines. She's like, no, we're doing, you know, the Super Bowl is coming to Scottsdale. It's coming to Phoenix. I'm like, what's that got to do with me? She's like, well, we're looking for a space to do the Super Bowl party. Okay. She's oh like, God. we got her like a budget of like 500K. Mm -hmm. And we give you a table. You could sell it or keep it or whatever. We do sponsorships. You get a piece of the sponsorship. Okay. I jump out of my chair. I'm like, hi, how are you? <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Let me show you around. So I got these three hangers. <laughs> this one in the middle, we have a plane in. And these other two, we have you know, are available and let me show you around and I could clear all this out, do this. I, all these cars can come out right away, ma'am. Whatever you need. <laughs> Whatever you need, I'll take it out. I'll be your boots on the ground. I'll be the guy you can talk to for anything. You need help with sponsorships. You need permits, liquor license, whatever. Anything you need, I can handle. Okay. I don't know who else you've been talking to. She's like, we've been talking to this other casino and I think we're going to go with the other casino, but we like this, like, exclusive side yeah it's like a vibe it's a yeah, air hanger, hanger like, like jet sick. all the yeah, nice cars yeah, yeah. she's like and i was like what's the budget again and she tells me and i'm like and she's like you know this guy's gonna be hosting you got this person there like starts saying all these crazy names and i'm like what are you talking about she's like no that's the host of the party all these people have bought tables and like i'm like who's but who bought the table she's like verizon wireless cbs 
Jeez, oh, man. Like big boys, yeah, yeah, yeah. How much on the table? She's like, oh, like a hundred k. You know, seventy k. The ones up front are two fifty, and uh, Noah and those guys actually flew in to do the tables from New York. Okay. So she had the, they had everything put together. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, you mean that you're going to give me one of these tables and pay me to use this space? She goes, yeah, you think you can handle it? I said, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Lock it in. Lock it in. Lock and you could have sold your table, they said, too. Yeah, she said you can sell your table. <laughs> That's crazy. So the only issue was it was on a live taxiway. So all the hangers... The planes actually pulled down. And they, she goes, you got to close down the taxiway this Saturday night before the Super Bowl. Oh, damn. Yeah, from like, here we go. From like uh, 7 p.m. until like 2 a.m. Okay. So you have to get a permit from the FAA How in Oklahoma. Mean? And you have to get all of the people that own the hangars to sign off. Okay. She goes, if you get that permit, I'm going to give you this party. Ooh. Bro, I run straight to the next <laughs> hangar. What's up, bro? I'm from hangar... Across the street, I'm doing a Max Magazine party, Super Bowl, you know, Hot 100s party. I got your tickets right here. You know there what I'm saying? Go. There you go. I need you to sign off on this. He's like, oh, man, what are you talking about? I said, well, I need to close the taxiway to be able to do this party. They're like, oh, no, we're not doing that. I said, okay, you want to sit at one of the tables? Okay, cool. So, boom, everybody starts signing. Yeah. And these are big companies like Sun State Equipment, you know, huge, huge guys. Yeah, huge. Five or six planes and, you know, the whole nine. But everyone wants to come to this party. So now the whole air park is talking about this party. So they sign off. I take the uh, petition with everyone signed. I FedEx it to Oklahoma. The FAA signs off. Boom. They're like, we're going to give you this party. We're going to give you this uh, permit. permit yeah. So I call her in New York. I'm like, boom, I got the permit. She goes, oh, man, that's great. She goes, I got bad news. She goes, I, I'm giving the party to the casino. Stop, what? bro. I swear. And at this point, I have exhausted everything I have. Damn, like, there's nothing bro. left. I'm like, no, you're, you're tripping. I was like, there's no way. I just, it cost me X amount to do this and this. And I, we had to pay the air park and, like, all these people to get this. We had to give them all kinds of different deposits in case we messed up the runway and, like, all kinds of stuff. She goes, yeah, I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do. Boom, click. No, oh, man. So I'm like, man. Defeated. I'm like, no way. <laughs> mm. Not taking no for an answer. I'm like, no way. Yeah. I got like 600 bucks left. Damn, bro. So I, there wasn't any Uber at the time. I took a taxi to the airport. I fly to New York. I go to 5th and Madison. Come on. Well, you Past pulled security, up. I pulled right up to their office. <laughs> oh Straight up. That's the hustle, <laughs> I didn't bro. have enough money to get home. I didn't oh, have anything shit. left. Like, I was down, like, yeah. cashed out at this point. <laughs> this man pulled up on them. That's crazy. In New York. <laughs> That's out. crazy. Fifth and Madison. I'll never That's been. crazy. They look out the window. They're like, what the? They're like, the guy from Scottsdale is here. Like, what is going on? They're like, I don't know. Let them in. I go in. I go into the conference room. I said, guys, I don't know who you need to call, but you, we got to get everybody in here. I said, I don't have enough money to get home. I don't have enough money to get my next meal, my next flight, or a cab, or anything. Wow. This is it. My life depends on getting this party. I knew if I got the party, not only would I get the funds, but I would also meet the people I wanted to meet. The Facts. networking is going to be huge there. The networking is going to be huge. Yeah. So she called at the time the owner, which owns Steak and Shake and like a bunch of stuff, okay. called everybody and they were like, they're like, what? The guy's there right now? I said, they're like, yeah, he's here right now. Like, he doesn't have money to go. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's like, no way. He's like, yeah, give him a party. Oh, give it to that? him. Okay. Cancel the other deal. Give them the deal. Damn, they saw the passion. You pulling up, They gave up, me bro. the deal on the spot. I said, I will get you every sponsor. I will make sure everything goes smooth. I will take care of all the car services, whatever you need, hotels, anything you can think of. I don't know what the other people are going to do for you, but I will do it all. And I promise you. Mm. Just like I got this permit, I'll do the rest. Okay. They're like, boom, you got it. Okay. So they're like, take him to dinner, get him a room, get this guy a check, get him out of here. Okay, okay. So they so they set you up nice, though. They, they were set like, me up nice. Leave you. Yeah, yeah. They set me up nice, and they were like, "Look, any per, any you know sponsors that you bring, you get twenty percent." Percent of yeah. oh beauty. We get Johnny Walker, we get Dos Equis, we get Dodge. 
cars. I had the Dodge cars going up and down the taxiway with celebrity test drives. Okay. We get we get every. And how are you, how are you getting those sponsors at the time? You're just leveraging the party at this Maxim. point. Maxim. Yeah. Then you're just saying yo Maxim. Yeah, I'm and they're, Maxim. And they're sold. I'm not even with anybody <laughs> else. <laughs> and just at this signing. point, I'm like I'm with Maxim and it's the Super Bowl. This is the hottest party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. It's still do? like one of the hottest parties yeah. like to this day. Mm. That's crazy. So they're like, okay, we're going to make your office the green room. We're going to take all three hangers. We're going to take the hanger on the other side. They ended up renting like 10 hangers at the end of the day. And they're like, we believe in you and you're going to be our guy. Okay. I think you pulling up though is like a huge move, dude. No, that had to be it. That was it. Nobody did that. Nobody was going to do that. There's no way. Nobody did that. So I pulled up. They gave it to me. And then I began, you know, I was already cool with them, but then I became super cool with them. Okay. And they were like, okay, this is how you're going to make some money. Go get us some sponsors. We want to do drag races up and down the taxiway. We want to have, you know, liquor sponsors. And, you know, you can, we'll give you a couple tables. You can sell them, which is, which I ended up selling. And one of the guys that bought the table for like crazy money, like 65K. Jeez. <laughs> Charged back the table on his Amex. No. <laughs> yes. No. Yes, a guy from Mexico charged back his table. It was one of my friend's friends. That's what <laughs> like four months later goes by, there's like 65 comes right out of my account. Wow. I'm like, yo, what happened to this guy with your boy with the table? <laughs> charged it back. Jeez. But that was just a funny side note. But besides that, we had all the dope sponsors. We had everybody come through. Um, my office became the green room. So they're like, man, uh, Sir Paul McCartney is here. And I'm okay. like, yeah, right. I hang up the phone. Yeah. Now, mind you, Noah's company and those boys are yeah. doing the tables. They're running it tight. You know, models are bust in. Noah's know. the Tau Group. Tau Group. Yep. Yeah, Tau Group yeah. came through. They ran it like they were running, you know. Like their own spot. Yeah. yeah. Like it was for real. It was serious. Yeah. A huge budget. So they're like, Sir Paul McCartney is here. The security was calling me because I was That's- the venue person. So now it's like you got French Montana is here, Jamie, the owner of the Suns, you know, Paul McCartney, Little Wayne, Justin Bieber, whoever you God, could think bro. of, anyone you could think of is they're not coming through the front. Yeah, they want to come through the back back office, which is my office. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. Then they're <laughs> like, oh yeah, they're like, hey man, I need like I need some cigars. Oh yeah, by the way, my cousin's at the airport. Oh yeah, I need a uh, extra room. You got any champagne? So next thing you know, I'm like, <clears throat> me and like a few of my friends are like juggling all of these artists and people and yeah. like handling whatever they need. So I'm like, yeah, we got you. Car service, like I was using the cars that I had as the car service. <laughs> <That's> the, <same laughs> but, the ones you were going to sell. Yeah, the ones we were going to sell. We were using those. Mm. So they hit me and they're like, Paul McCartney's here. I'm, I hang up. I'm like, bro, stop. <laughs> a guy calls me back with like a British accent. He's like, hey, Paul McCartney's here. His son wants to come in. You know, he's right outside your office. I go back there. I'm like, where's he at? All SUVs with NFL stickers on the side. Okay. They're like, this is his son. I said, bro, stop. I said, where is he at? If he's here, then you can have whatever you want. Yeah. Pulls down the window. He goes, why are you being so unprofessional? Oh, oh shit. shit. I said, oh, oh shit. Yeah, you shit, sir. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> let me, can I get a picture? He goes, no. I said, he goes, I said, why don't you come inside? Let me show you around. So he gets out, comes in, give, we gave us on the table. Obviously sure. he chopped it up for a little bit and then he left. But mind you, now I'm meeting all of these people. That's what I'm saying. That would, I never would have had the opportunity to meet all the craziest people. And you're in the in perfect the position at that point. Cause they, they're like, you're the venue owner mm-hmm. in a way. Mm-hmm. So I was, just, had I was just a lee C, but yes. But I'm just, that's know, what they, they don't know saying. that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, like, bro, at this point in your head, are, are you also just kind of thinking, like, bro, I was just here to sell cars. <laughs> like, now, yeah. I'm, now I'm hosting, saying, like, parties, Justin Bieber, but, Paul McCartney. Like, this is insane. It was crazy, but I was taking what I learned at the hotel and hospitality. Yeah. Yes. And I was like, I'm going to figure this out. Yeah. Because these are the people that I need to meet. Yeah. I know they all love cars. Yeah. But none of these people even know what I do at this point. But now I have everyone's cell phone. Hey bro, I'm going to the gym. You wanna come? Uh, I don't know bro. I don't really have energy today, man. It's a fucking Wednesday, middle of the week. Like, nah, probably not to be honest. No energy. No energy? Buddy. You ever tried full send subs? Energy formula? Take one of these and you'll be ready to send it with me at the gym. Full send subs? That sounds amazing, bro. Send me one. Thank 
Thank you. Open that bad boy up. Okay. Give it a little shimmy shake. Looks like pink magic. Let's test it out. Tastes great too. See, let's see what it does. Ah, ah, ah. MBH15, full send supplements. Let's get back to this episode. But that, that's what's crazy, right? Like just taking in like, you, you know, you, when, you, when you worked at the hotel and you were running it and you were taking it seriously, you're able to use that after, right? Yeah, hundred percent. And I think that, like that, that, like that's what people don't understand. When you, when, even when you're working a job, thinking about like taking that step to run your own business, like you really gotta work hard and 100%. still take it seriously, because then that that shows the type of person you're gonna be in your business, 100%. right? Hundred percent. And I think these guys are seeing it. Now. I mean, they had no idea, but you were now a car a car dealer. <laughs> when when you when you tell the story, owner. it feels like it was meant to be, though. You know, because like you went through all these these downfalls almost. And you were almost like done. You said 600 bucks to your name. A million times, I've, it has not worked out. Yeah. yeah, but you made it work. You just got to keep swinging. So yeah, I feel like, I feel you like you've had like, pre like very pressure-filled moments. 100%. And you just had to like just be creative keep, at that yeah, moment. You got to be creative and you just got to keep going. Yeah. Because you're going to fail a million times. Yeah. You know what? You're going to get a million no's. Mm. A million but it only takes one yes. And I that, mean, even you going to pull up in yeah. New York, like they could have just said no, and then you, yeah. were, you were fucked. So that was a huge risk too. But also like from an ego perspective, Crazy. like you pulled up there and you just that's, were honest. That's also like, Bro, true. I got nothing. That's up. also true. You know what I mean? Like, how, have you always been like that? Is that something you still try to carry with you today? Like, in, like you know. Yeah, you want to try to stay humble, yeah. you know, as humble as possible. And, you know, thank God for every day and treat everybody the same and yeah and just give everybody good customer service and just try to take care of people yeah you know no matter who no is. matter who it is because you never know who you're dealing with and it goes such a long way you know? so the party ends you cash yeah. out mm. and you meet a bunch of i go to the bahamas like oh, that's right. <laughs> like, like your honeymoon bro the bahamas, bahamas. Like, <laughs> my feet were hurting for like weeks at a time i was like man i got enough money to go to the bahamas i'm out that's jokes so i went Mastro's, I went to um, Stanley K, went to the Bahamas, kicked back, and then I got back, and everybody was calling me. And they're like, man, like, when you, have you been to L.A.? And I hadn't, was only here, like, once or twice, but not, like, in L.A. They're like, man, when you come to L.A., like, man, make sure you, make sure you look us up. Yeah. Like, make sure you. Make and these sure. are just, like, who, people that heard of the party and shit like that? People that were calling me to take care of people. Okay. That I wanted to come to the party. Okay. 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 All the management, all the you know people that run, and they were all based in in, in LA for sure. Yeah, yeah, and they were just like, yo, you know, so and so's at the door. You know, I'm I'm the manager, but they were just calling me because they were giving them my number. Okay. To guide them in to get through the artist entrance. Yeah. So I, the Rolodex just got. Huge, out of, yeah. insane yeah it popped off yeah and they were like man thanks for taking care of my guy like when you come out to la like i got you i'm like they're like what do you even do anyways i'm like well you know i sell cars boats planes like whatever and they're like oh, okay we're like for sure like uh come out to la so i come out to la meet jamie go to his house you know became super close wow. with him he's like one of my best friends yeah. all of his people then we just started to get you know, once the, everyone that we met from the party figured out, like, what our real business was, they were like, oh, yeah, I got Chris Brown. He needs 12 cars. like Just like that. Three yeah. Lamborghinis at once. Like, he's pulling up to the Suns Arena. Go meet him. I go in to meet him when he's on tour. He's like, oh, yeah. He's like, I want this, 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 and this. And, like, he would buy 12, 10, 12 cars at a time. A few at a time. At a time. So and this I is would, how, 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 like, what's this the This was, time? like, right after. Damn, oh, so that party really changed. <laughs> yeah, because they were at the, once the people figured out what I did, they were like, "Oh man, you know, so and so is into cars." They're like, "Let me get you. Let me hook you up with his guy." Cool, so cool, sick, cool, bro. cool. Mm -hmm. Also, this was immediate. It, it was, was immediate. It was right away because they didn't yeah. know like if I was like a promoter, a party planner, it's true, yeah, a airplane guy. Like <laughs> yeah. they didn't know what I did. <laughs> they just liked you. Like yeah, they were like, did. "Yeah, man, like come out." Like I went to Jay. I went to Jamie. I went to Vegas with Jamie, and then I. Went to his house and he was like, "Oh yeah," he's like, "I know, I know a bunch of guys that like cars. You know, let's let's figure it out." Okay. And then 
each person that I've met and started to connect with through other people would just started to make the intros. And then that's all it took. I was like, oh man, this is it. Like LA, the LA car market is like insane. Like forget Scottsdale. Scottsdale's amazing, but here it's like all the big boys were here. How long did it take you to, to make that decision and say, I'm staying here? Oh, uh, in LA? Yeah. I didn't make the move permanently to LA until two years ago. So you were just going back and forth? About three years ago. Three years ago. Yeah, going was, back and forth? I was going back and forth that entire time. Okay. Wow. But it would like, there was like a little, we would lose a little bit because it would still take a car six hours to get here. And then True. these guys, you know, girls, they are, are very hands-on. So they want to deal with you. They want to they wanna see you. you, you yeah. See yeah, you, you got to pull yeah. up, be there, walk them through it, make sure everything is good. Um, and so like three years ago, this is when we made the the jump to come Decision here. to come here. Yeah. We were coming nonstop, but then we were like, man, we just got to be here. So you opened up the first spot? Open up. I guess you had the finances to make it happen at that time. I opened up the first spot during <laughs> COVID and then COVID hit. Oh, it was during COVID. Yeah. That's when oh. we got the first location. As soon as we signed the deal, like boom. How'd you find the location that you got the first one at? Through another friend of mine. Dope. And just it was all networking. It was whole another time. car collector had already owned the space. He still owns it. And so we worked out a deal with him and we're like, boom, let's just start here. Yeah. Was 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 Jamie a big part of you meeting a lot of these people? These these big for people. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And that's how that's how we got our show and like have done a ton of deals and he's just been he's just a solid guy. What do you what do you think it was? Like, I mean, if he's gonna you know, if he's recommending you someone someone like like Jamie Foxx, like of, of his stature to kind of you know Tell people like, yo, RD's the guy for cars, like sort of put his neck out on the line for your business. Like, I mean, what do you think he saw in you? Or maybe yeah. what what like what what did he tell you to be like, yo, listen, I'm gonna put you in this position, I'm gonna introduce you to these people, but you gotta get the job done. Like how like how did that whole conversation go? Was it over time? Like what did that look like? It was over time and it was definitely like he'll tell you, no is not in our vocabulary. Because these mm. guys don't just call us for cars, they call us for everything. Yeah. For That's really? what a lot of people don't understand. Like, okay, well, well you're not gonna say no, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> and what, are they, what else? What else? Like boats and shit. Like anything you can think of. Yeah, want to buy a car? Yeah, you know, ASAP Rocky. Boom, first car he, one of the first cars he ever drove. I went to his house, came through, gave him a car. We started driving. I'm like, okay, cool. You know, let me get your license. It's like license. He's like, I don't have a license. I'm like, yeah, give me one of the other guys' license. He's like, bro, none of us have license. <laughs> oh, oh shit. my god. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like, well, I'm buying a brand new Ferrari, no license. He can't even drive it, right? <laughs> yeah, I no license. I, we, so we would drive together, like we drove to Jamie's house together, actually in that Ferrari, helped him get that. We figured out the license, figure out the insurance. So it's literally like and you can never say no. Yeah, then it's you know. So the first spot, like. You didn't really have experience opening up your own business to that extent at that time. No, so you're just learning as you went. Yeah, absolutely. Did you have anyone with you at the time that was helping you kind of get through it, or we're just trying know? to figure it out? Yeah, you know? we're still trying to figure it out. No, that's I think what you people, figured it out pretty. I think you're. I think yeah, but that's what people have to understand. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. The, we're still trying to figure it out. There's always ways we could be better and yeah. faster and sharper and. And we're doing that every day. You know, we're big believers in that. So the pandemic hits mm. right when you, I guess, open. Did you open yet? That, no, we couldn't. We couldn't. You know okay. Like the lockdown here was crazy. It was like Toronto or Australia. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. It was serious. Yeah, you know, yeah. not other states. It didn't matter, but yeah, it was serious here. So uh, Jamie was like, man, we were, he was obviously saw a lot of deal. Like we did a deal with Drake and Jamie kind of helped me through the deal with Drake. <clears throat> And some other deals. And that was a crazy deal with the car that ended up in Columbia. And it was like a, a movie, the, the entire deal. He's like, man, he's like, dude, this is a show. It was like, and at the time, like recently, not recently, but like five years ago, I was never on Instagram. We had an Instagram, but it wasn't, I wasn't like the face of it. Yeah. And he was like, man, you should definitely, this is definitely a show. Okay. He was thinking ahead. He eh? was like, this is a show. He's like, this is. this Coming is, from him too. That's mm -hmm. big. Yeah, you can see you can see it a mile away. He's like showing the people the hustle and what you guys do behind the scenes to make these deals happen. He goes, man, it's crazy. And pe goes, people would appreciate it way more. People would appreciate it. He goes, this is definitely something that we should do. So okay. th when the, when does the name come in to play? Wires only. Mm. When did that when did that come? 
the name came in like while I was still in Scottsdale. Oh, okay. okay, okay. And yeah. everyone was always like, at that time, like I started to get a little bit of buzz and it was just, everyone was like, oh man, I need this car, I need that car. And I was just like, man, you got to send a wire. Let's go. Let's go. You got to send a wire. Like if that's what you want, you got to send a wire because everyone's like, oh, let me get this, let me get that. I want to, I said, bro. Show me the money. Show me the money. <laughs> send the wire. <laughs> wire man. Send the wire. wire. So I said wires only. Yo, the name is iconic, bro. So it just kind of stuck. Yeah. And like it took off like crazy. And people loved it. At first, people were like, what are you talking about? But the people that knew were like, oh, man, this is great. Yeah. And we love we love the name. And it just came from telling people to pay for whatever they're trying to buy. <laughs> it's true. You know? With a wire. Yeah. So, yeah, just so you up. kick off the Instagram when? When does this happen? Mm. We we had the Instagram, but we changed it okay. obviously, and then we really started to get some traction with okay. like some really oh, yeah. Look at what you're showing every insane day. Insane clients like Tom Holland from Spider Man, you know, just Kim Kim K. Obviously, yeah. some just and these are people that found you through Instagram mm. and friends. Yeah, okay. the Tom of DM'd course. us. We had a we had a La Ferrari at the hotel where these guys used to work. And, to, and and Joey actually told me, he was like, hey, Tom Holland is here. I was like, oh, man, tell him I said, what's up? He's like, all right, I'm going to tell him right now. So Joey and Michael tell Tom Holland, they're like, yo, because when I was in Scottsdale, I would, before I came here, I would have my cars before we got the other location at the hotel. Oh, shit. okay. So the hotel was letting us sell the cars out of the, uh, out of the hotel. So I would geez. FedEx them the paperwork. They would put the plates oh, and stuff shit. on the cars, Damn. and we were selling them right out of the montage before we had a space. That's crazy. The come up. So you had them hustling. That's insane. Hustling like crazy. And yeah, they're like, yeah. Tom Holland wants to take the La Ferrari. And I said, give it to him. Yeah, say less. Absolutely. Yeah. So that Joey's like, okay, I'm going to tell him right now. So he goes to give it to him. He's like, oh, I can't. He's like, I don't want to. He's like, it's too much. He's like, it's a $4 million car. Oh, you know, man. he's like. I'm too nervous. He's very nice. Like the best guy you'll ever meet. Mm -hmm. Humble. Seems like a nice dude. The nicest guy you'll ever meet. He's like, you know what? He's like, thank you for the offer. But he's like, I'm, you know, I'm shooting a movie and stuff or doing some press. When you come out here, you know, come through. And it was all over it through Instagram, like DMs yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he came back and we flew out and linked up with him. And, you know, he's been one of our friends ever since. I guess yeah. that's when you've seen the power of social media too. Yes. And you're like, damn. Yes. <laughs> we got to triple down on this shit. When I noticed there's a really big, one of the biggest guys, I can't say who because I had to sign a bunch of paperwork, <laughs> but <clears throat> one of the biggest guys did over a $2 million deal with us Okay. on a Friday. His manager saw the car and his manager was originally buying it. And he okay. calls me. He's like, hey, man, bring me this car. The G-Wagon convertible, the oh, G650. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Things fucked. So we're on the way. I take it to the manager. He's like, man, we got a problem. I'm like, bro, the wire already came in. This was like within, we posted it, didn't even put for sale. Just put it on the story, going to the power of social media. Mm. We posted it like at three o'clock by like, you know, 10 a.m. the next day, the car was paid for. Done. That was quick. Over a $2 million deal. <laughs> That's crazy. The manager says, man, he's like, can you find me another one? I said, yeah, absolutely. He goes, you got to take this one to the big boss. Damn. Okay. And so we dropped it off at, you know, his his partner's house. And that's when we were like, okay, this Shit is works. social media, bro. Social media is the key because yeah. everybody has their phone in their hand. Everybody's yeah. on IG. And you could do a lot of deals on social media. Yeah. I and think that's so a lesson for people, bro, because you like you just said, you're talking like two million dollar car yeah. deals off of, an, off of an Instagram and a DM. We've done four million. Like Through a DM? Three million. Like, that's yeah. fucking crazy. Of people seeing a story post. So underestimated. Damn. Because people are on their phones. Yeah. And they're always looking at stories. It may not be you going out or the pod or maybe a, you know, yeah. happy dad or just whatever. Just documenting. Yeah, just documenting. Could be the car. And we try to do, you know, our style. You'll see a lot of guys doing it now, but we started with, like, the lifestyle Post with the car, with the music and the palm trees, and yeah. give the people the vibe, the sense of the vibe. Yeah, yeah. and it worked clearly. And so we started to mainly do a lot of the bigger deals all on social media. So you're using social media like pretty much during the pandemic mm. in a big way, mm -hmm. right? And For I guess sure. the shop was closed. Maybe you're only doing private. Yeah, people coming in private only. Yeah, 
Okay. So we what, had to make it through that too, which was crazy. Yeah, being here too, right? Like you said, it was longer. It was serious. At what, at what point on the, on the socials do you say, like, I got to show my face more? It was probably right before that. Okay. okay. Yeah, they were like, man, Jamie was like, dude, you got to come out, talk a little yeah. bit more, post some of this stuff that you got. Like, you're on a yacht with Leonardo DiCaprio and Capri. What? Like, you got to... You, Is that you, what you were doing? You got to... Yeah, I got that. That's on, that's on there. <laughs> he was like, you got you to gotta put some of this stuff on there. You know, it was a charity event, but you got to put some of that stuff yeah, on yeah, there. Yeah. Like, people will be amazed to see, like, what goes into these deals. So we started to do it, and, like, some of our videos got... One of them got 6.2 million views. Multiple videos got millions of views. Yeah. Tom Holland going to the Spider-Man premiere got a million views. You know, just like crazy reaches. Yeah, and then the if numbers you, are insane. You know, on the day that our show came out, Million Dollar Wheels on TNT. Which we got to talk about Which we sure. got to talk about soon. Um, uh, Kim posted it on her story. 300 million followers, biggest influencer in the world. It got our post <laughs> two million views. It reached six million. Oh my god! Interactions, it's disgusting. <laughs> How's that relationship with Kim? I want to. I want to talk. She's about the best. That. Yeah, you know, like she's a real deal car person. How did that? How did that come to be? How pays did you guys it, connect? What, pays what attention like? to every single detail. Like, Interesting. She's like the coolest person, the nicest person you'll ever meet. For real, eh? The best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The best, and she really knows her shit when it comes to cars. I guess just being out in LA, that's kind of like somebody you want to connect with. If for sure. The kind of cars that you're selling, Yeah, right? for sure. Because she has a bunch of cars and yeah. she's super into cars and she's been rocking flat cars forever. 100%. So that's like an, for us, that's like a customer like icon that, you know, we want to always work with. Yeah, with, yeah, yeah. And I'm curious, from, from like, let's just say selling a car to Kim or being on the yacht in Capri with, Leonardo DiCaprio and the hotel how many, what's the year difference like how how many years ahead are we from the day you say all right I'm out of here to like you're selling a car to Kim Kardashian bro, it was just like Kyle said bro this was like 2013 yeah you know, this yeah. is like a 10 year grind yeah I know no one sees it it's a 10 year grind yeah. it yeah. takes 10 years yeah it all yeah it's it takes says 10 that. years yeah. you have to know I watched his pod that he did with you guys which yeah. was great by the way but look at him he started in 2010 yeah and we started in that hangar like in 2013 damn so, so right around that time so from the first from the first shop now we're here it's 2022 how big has your team grown from then till now oh man now we have you know 15 people between social and sales and now you got someone on social just doing it. you're like yeah, yeah you gotta do that shit all day people <laughs> just yeah videos pictures music posts algorithms <laughs> and teams. How, how are you how are you building that team you know because i feel like it's you guys been are like guys. a culture you guys are like a family here you know yeah it's so been, how have you built that it's been a lot like the people that we have are the same people that we've had since since we came That's out a here blessing bro i just grabbed them from all over the yeah. place said so, hey know? quit there you're with me now yeah <laughs> exactly pretty much what do you look for in somebody the hospitality training for sure yeah you know and just not saying no yeah you know? We got a really good team and everybody understands like they see me do the craziest stuff from, you know, three o'clock in the morning with someone in the studio to flying, you know, to Italy to take care of something or whatever it may be. They, they're like, yeah, this guy does whatever it takes to make these deals happen. And we got to do the same thing. So they I remember all, in, uh, in one of uh, I think it was Steve's. One of Steve's vlogs. Yeah, Steve's when he did the, the I think it was for Kodak. He was looking yeah. for a car for Kodak and he called you. Yeah, and we actually like, sold the guy that we sold that we got that car from. We actually sold a plane to. Okay. Damn. And he was gonna buy that lowrider right behind yeah. us. Yeah. And I said, "Listen, if this is going to the East Coast in Miami, you need a dunk. If yeah. you're on the West Coast, you need a six four. Yeah. And Steve, you know, he's crazy. He buys tons of cars from us. He doesn't care about whatever the cost is. He just yeah. likes to. He gives back more than anyone I've ever seen. By the way. Yeah. That's how I met him. He bought cars to give to people as gifts, which a lot of people don't know because some of them we didn't even film. He just like came in and was like, buy this car, this car, took a shot, <laughs> this car, give this oh, car to someone. Yeah, yeah. But he's the real deal when it comes to giving, giving back. Yeah. How'd you guys meet? How'd you guys meet Steve? I don't, I forget. He probably got referred by someone. He came in one day, faded. 
for yeah. sure <laughs> and like, with a bottle in hand a for bottle sure. in hand and swim trunks and we have <laughs> we have the same birthday oh, oh okay and right, i was I born in winter park he was born in like orlando Oviedo, so we're right next to each other okay we're both august 26 yeah you, he's given a majority of the cars that he's bought and yeah, which is crazy, crazy which is crazy as gifts yeah, yeah. You no know, it's, it's people that he's met that helped him out along the way and yeah. yeah yeah he's the real he's the real deal when it comes to like giving back i gotta bring it back to to drake just because we're toronto boys have a water yeah for sure how did that how did that uh how was that <laughs> how was that experience can you tell us what he got we actually bought some stuff from him okay and he has a guy that he works with in in toronto that tony bets yeah tony who's our yeah. boy tony bets is a great, great guy I'm trying to get him on hey tony if you see this you got to get pod. Tony on. Yeah, man. <laughs> he looks like a G. We never met him, but we see him G. on the gram. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's a G. He's a cool, cool car. Serious, serious car guy. So we always deal with Drake through Tony because cool. that's, that's Drake's guy. Okay. And uh, we got a lot of respect for them and their whole camp, but they're, those guys are serious car guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm serious. So wh when, does the, when does the show come along? Mm. The show with TNT. So how does that so come the about? the show, Jamie was like, man, this is a show. We got <clears throat> We got to run this. We got to give it a shot. So we went in my friend's garage and um, my guy, what's his name that helped us with that? Taylor. Oh, Chris. Chris Will that owns Morphe Makeup. Okay. okay. Huge car guy. Has a crazy, amazing story, by the way. Came, started with nothing. It's biggest makeup brush manufacturer in the world. And Morphe's huge. Huge. Yeah, it's fucking so I awesome. hit him up. I'm like, yo, I need your garage. <laughs> it's full of hyper cars. He's like, bro, what are you talking about? I'm like, look, I'm doing this show. I need to shoot the sizzle at your house. Da, da, da. He's like, all right. He's like, come on, pull up. So we go there. We go there with my friend Taylor, who has a, a pickleball paddle with Jamie Foxx called the best paddle, by the way, which is insane, which we got to get those guys on the show. He comes and shoots the sizzle in Chris's house. Okay. okay. And it's like this, but like this is his house like <laughs> but insane like this looks is just nothing it's like bugatti bugatti la ferrari coupe la ferrari convertible pagani enzo like the oh craziest thing okay and it's spotless yes so i'm in my chair doing my thing doing the sizzle and jamie's like let me see it and like in the future is calling us like you know during the sizzle like while we're shooting <clears throat> doing deal we're doing deals with him we're doing deals with you know whoever you can think of craziest people on the planet I take the sizzle to Jamie. He's like, change this, this, and this. We change a couple things. He's like, okay, cool. He's like, I'm going to have my people set the meeting. Let's go. That's all you need to hear. I'm like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> so we tweak the sizzle. But mind you, this took some time. Okay. This was, this, this was like, what, like a four-year? That's what I was going to say. How, how long are we talking here? Four-year process from the day that we Man. first started. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because it's not easy. Yeah. It's like a one in a billion chance. So... When we get the first meeting, the the agents and everyone was like, yo, we got to do this at 9 a.m. I'm like, my, my brother Jamie doesn't get up for nobody, much less at 9 a.m. Yeah. Like, okay, what time does he get up? I said, whenever he wants to get up. <laughs> like, I'm not, him, it's yeah. like, he's going to do it. Like, I'm not telling him to get up at 9 a.m. So I'm sweating this. They set the meeting for 9 a.m. So oh, I'm like, anyways, okay. Yeah, so I'm like, man, the only way I know this is going to work is I got to do this at Jamie's house. You got to pull up on him, yeah. Just like this. Yeah. So <laughs> I got the computer set up. I got the lights. I got, like, the security helping me set them up. And I got the two chairs. I'm in Jamie's living room. They don't know that I'm in Jamie's living room. Like, Jamie doesn't even know. Well, Jamie wasn't up yet. Okay. <laughs> but they don't know, so I have the whole thing set up. I told him. He's like, yeah, yeah. He's like, pull up. All right. He's like, we got this. He's like, come through. So I tell the security, I'm like, man, get Jamie some Starbucks. Like, please, can we make him some breakfast? He's like, hey, don't worry. He's like, hey, just relax. Get your little thing set up. And no one, everyone's looking at me like I'm crazy. Like, I got the sizzle. I wanted, to, like, I wanted to show them my, my show, but it was with Discovery. Okay. Boom, 9 a.m. comes. Like, I'm like, damn, I'm just going to kick this off. So there's two chairs. And so we start the meeting. There's like 30 people on this Zoom. All the executives, everybody. Mm -hmm. So I play the sizzle. I'm like doing my thing. I'm like, you know, I'm telling them stories, like telling them about the show. They're like, you know, that's great. You know, we'll get back to you. Okay. I didn't know the whole time Jamie was standing right there. 
Oh shit! But they couldn't see him. Okay. But he was just standing there drinking his coffee, just watching you <laughs> He's do just it. Just watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just chilling. And then he sits down, and mm-hmm. he goes, "Let me tell you about RD." And everybody on the Zoom is like, "Hold, oh, bro, was it? What? Yeah." And he does his thing. He's like, "Man, so so he starts telling them stories," and they're like, "Oh man, don't take this anywhere else." They're like, "We want this." Oh, <laughs> just like that. Amazing. Right they're like oh, the amazing partners at Discovery. Incredible people. They're like, we see this. This is gonna. And this is mind you. This is during COVID. Yeah. So everything is on lockdown. These are Zoom calls only. Normally we'd be in person. We yeah. would go do the pitch. You know, sit with everybody. Did it all on Zoom. And they're like, don't take it anywhere else. Damn. Just like that. Bought it on the spot. But then it took probably two years after that, year and a half of development. Yeah. Pre-production, trying to figure it out and put it together. Yeah. What goes into that? Like, it's a lot. Yeah, and were they, like, willing to work with you in terms of the vision of the show, or did you have to yeah. kind of... Yeah, no, no, we okay. told them what we, like, we said we want to capture real deals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The good, the craziness, yeah. the real reactions from customers, like, yeah. and clients. We want to capture all of that. Yeah. And if we can do that, like, we're down to do this. And how are you, like building that up, filming all that while running the business at the same time. <laughs> it's tough. Like, that's yeah, crazy. It's a lot of work. It's and a full-time job. Because you're also probably trying to convince some of your clients to be like, hey, For are sure. you down to come on camera? For sure. And what's that like? like what are you telling them? Yeah, they're looking like? at, it's tough. Yeah. Because yeah. you got to get the location releases signed. You got to get the talent agreement signed. You got to yes. get their whole camp to sign off on it. You got to get the green light from them. But at that point, we had built up so well Everyone we asked were like, oh, my God, you got a show? Can't wait. They just wanted to show you love. Can't yeah, yeah, wait. Yeah. They just wanted like, to we're going to bring yeah, sure. it. Tom, I hit Tom. He's like, I'm coming. I'm That's on the cool. way. They were like, yeah, right. I said, no, Tom Holland's coming. He's coming for sure. Yeah. First episode. They're like, yeah, stop. He's not coming. <laughs> no security, nothing. <laughs> Baseball hat. Just walked in. Walked right in. And he told him, don't film. That's crazy. Don't film me. Don't film nothing. So I was like, I was like, I called Jamie. I was like, hey, Jamie, Tom is here. You got to get down here ASAP. So Jamie came down. He's like, okay, cool. Let's run this. And so one of the first episodes that airs tonight at 7 o'clock. Yes. Let's go. Uh, on TNT, which is crazy. I can't even believe it. It's the first time it's airing on TNT. Um, is uh, the Tom Holland, uh, Jamie episode, which is insane. So it's it was on, what was it on before? It was on Discovery Plus. And you made the okay. move to TNT. And we moved to TNT. Which is a way better fit. Crazy team. Yeah, yeah. So much love. Right on after the NBA, we couldn't ask for better partners. That's crazy. They were like, look, I, I was like, we have to be able to film these people and, and see the hustle that my team puts together to make this stuff happen. So yeah. you can believe in yourself, bet on yourself, never give up, work hard. All the stuff that we believe in and try to do every day, we want to show a little bit about that so people can see like, Okay, they, people just don't walk in and buy these colonies like off the street. There's like a lot that <laughs> yeah. goes into like the whole art of doing the deal also. So we wanted to like share that with people too. So it would be motivational also. So so you got the whole team involved in the show everybody's as well. Like, everybody's in, I love in that, bro. it. Everybody's sick. in it. Yeah. Everyone's absolutely. getting their screen time. I like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah man. Get both with some friends. You can't do these deals without them, without them, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah 100%. 100%. So Damn. At, w- at what point? Okay, so you have this spot now. Is the vision here different than your first shop? Yeah, I mean, for sure. So we're going to st- hopefully start shooting season two. Yes. We're going to start shooting it right here. That's you know? insane. So we got to add a bar, finish out the kitchen, finish the lounge. By the way, you guys can't see on camera, but this place is beautiful. We're going to show you when we vlog it, but yeah. d- d- unreal. Did you ever think, like going back to the show quickly, like, Did you was that ever in, in the plans? I mean, I <laughs> kind of always thought, there was something there because okay. I knew people would love the clients. Yeah. Because yeah. the clients are like the most incredible people yeah. from Jay Balvin to Kim to Jamie. And then people love the cars mm-hmm. and they also love the hustle. Mm. It's like, oh, that's, that's the part right there. That, yeah. That's the real part. They love the hustle. They love to come home, turn on the TV and be like, wow, how does person buy a Bugatti? Yeah. Like, what did they do? What does that client do? What, how much is the car? How many were made? how the deal gets delivered. Yeah. What do they want done to the car? Like people want to know how that happens. Yeah. yeah. How the so whole would thing you, would down. you guys pride yourself on the hospitality side of things? For sure. hundred yeah. percent. Cause no is not in our vocabulary. Yeah. The so stuff, what kind of, what kind of treatment that. is someone getting that's coming in here? 
you whatever they want whatever you can think of Damn. if it's catering with nobu and you you know want mari- mariachi's playing or <laughs> while they're looking wanted, at some cars well, we got to shut everything down and it's only them in here if they want to deliver it to their house we wrapped a tour bus pink one time and drove it to new york for a daughter's birthday oh, took her to six flags brought the tour bus back and sold it stuff like that i mean it's the craziest stuff you could ever think of but we don't say no we just try to figure it out These yeah other guys, you know, they're great, but they may go home at 5 o'clock and come in at 9. And, you know, us, yeah. we're 24-7. These guys are 24-7, 365. They're here right now, aren't they? Yeah, they're, here, <laughs> right, they're, they're here right now, Joey yeah. and Michael, and they're always taking care of whatever you can think of. Because our guys, when there's an issue, we don't say, oh, yeah, it's under warranty, take it to the dealer. We pick up the car, flatbed it, we yeah. give them a loaner car, we detail their car. We fill it up with gas. We fix all the issues. We make sure everything is good. Yeah. And it, we just, the door to door, door to door service is what we pride ourselves on to make sure that everything is okay, just not the car, whatever well, they could see, think of. Bro, like from the moment you walked in to the moment we literally turned the mics on and said, action, you were on like 30 calls, yeah. bro. <laughs> Yo, yeah, hey, talk to stop. this person. This person's doing this. This person's doing that. I didn't want to know what your phone was like. That's craziness. I want to know for anybody who's thinking about getting into this business, yeah. Um, let's say the car business. Um, what advice would you give them? Hmm. Man, get some money together. Yeah. Yeah. Get your get money a, up. Get a good investor or a partner, and just make sure you have enough capital. Yeah. yeah. Is and that something you wish you had? A good an investor like yeah, coming for up? Sure. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I think it would, but I think you learned so much from like doing it your way yeah. too. You know? You, yeah. It just takes a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah, it took a bit longer. It takes it takes a while. Yeah. It takes a lot of money. And I would just say be patient. Yeah. Trust the process. And you will get 100 no's. But all it takes is that one yes. I get told no all the time. But you just got to keep on sure. swinging. Yeah. I was going to say, do, do you have any partners? Or was this no. like RD this from it. day one? I got my boy Zach, who's in Miami right now. He's upstairs in that office. Oh. We do a lot of stuff together, but he has his own business. I have my own, but we work together on a lot of yeah, yeah. a lot of stuff. What's the long term vision? You wanna you wanna see yourself more, let's say, in the media side of things with the with the with the show. Yeah, the show is a lot of fun. Yeah, the you having fun with that? Fun. It's great. It's a cool way to involve the clients and do killer content, which you guys do every day. Yeah, and really get it out there. So yeah. ideally, that would be amazing to keep that. Keep the show going because it's how many, how many more shops you trying to open though? <laughs> I don't know. We're working on Miami next. Stop. Yeah. Let's go. That's our city, that's bro. The, that's that's our spot. city, man. Good place. No, that's dope. Listen, first of all, I mean, appreciate you having us in here. Of course, man. Like this Huge is fucking fans, beautiful. Appreciate like you, literally every car I ever dreamed of even like yeah. looking at is, is right. I mean, behind. this is your favorite. This is right my here. favorite. The yeah, call yeah, is my it. favorite, bro. But listen, we're the MBH podcast, brother. Money buys happiness. Do you believe money buys happiness? Absolutely. <laughs> all right. 100%. All right, that's the show, guys. <laughs> you can definitely pay for all the stuff that you need and can definitely buy your mom a nice house. Yeah. yeah. The best doctors, best, you know, health care. The best day. outfits. Best outfits, <laughs> best schools, but it can definitely help you with a lot of stuff, taking care of your family. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I think that's important to be able to give back to, to people that need it. That's nice. what it can do. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, you see it, like, especially when you're explaining your story, like, the stress level goes down when the money goes up. Yeah. Would you agree with that? Because everyone always says, yo, more money, more problems. Well, the si- okay, when you had the 600 bucks to your name, you were a bit stressed, yeah? <laughs> I'm still stressed. <laughs> it's you know, different kind of stress, I'm though. I'm still stressed, yeah. It's just different kind of stress. But that the stress is always there. You know, being able to make the money and eventually do something with it, I think, is a, the cool part, you know? Yeah. As, a, as an entrepreneur, though, like, how do you, I just saw, like we just said, we seen you on your phone going off before the episode started. Is there anything you do to kind of just chill sometimes? Yeah, hang out with my girl, Sam. Okay. Mm. Kick back, play with my dogs. I got two bulldogs. Nice. Cool. You know, that kind of thing. Go out on the boat. We're mm. the dealer for cigarette boats. Oh, those Big are the best boats, bro. Boats. Those are the you best gotta, You got to get those guys on the pod. Yo, man. Alex. We'd love to, yeah. bro. Yeah. yeah they they started the, that up? They just bought the company. Okay. Yeah. But they have an amazing story. Alex and his dad, John, that own Cigarette Racing. Okay. And they're in Miami. Yeah. yeah Their yeah, house yeah. was the house that they just did the um, future last future video, Cali video at. Yeah. And they're really good guys. Yeah, someone was mentioning, someone was actually mentioning this to us uh, to get so. them on. I you got to get them on because they're Those are like, beautiful boats, bro, by the way. They're, yeah. they're, we're the dealer for cigarette. Oh, all right. So we're the dealer for California if you need a cigarette boat. <laughs> okay. So 
uh, I like to go out on the boats. Yeah. Obviously. That's Yo, nice keep it keep it up, brother. Seriously, your yeah, inspiration you. to everyone yeah. watching. I'm sure they're going to be hell inspired by this. Congratulations on the show. Thank yes. you. Tonight, Make sure yes. you guys tune in. TNT. TNT. You already know. Um, but we'll we'll be back. We'll be back. Yeah. Absolutely. Appreciate you, brother. We'll run it back. But again, once again, thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Guys, if you made it this far, we love you. Like, subscribe, do the duties, comment. You know, you know the drill. We don't gotta say it this many times. Show Wires on only. TNT. Yeah, yeah. F- Money check him out on IG. Wires yeah. only. <laughs> yes. And on that note, once again, thank you, bro. Thank you, guys. Jay. 